free version of Elementor, which is the Elementor page builder, you get only these four sections. You get page, you get section, and you get global widgets. But if I click here, you will be able to see all the pro options as well. So in pro options, you get pop-ups, header, footer, single page, blog, the archive of blog posts, and so on and so forth. And if you see, I have so many templates that I've added from the Elementor templates library and also the Invato Elements plugin. This is the mostly used plugin by me, right? Now let's go and add a template. It's very easy. All you have to do is choose a template. So in Elementor Pro, you get so many options. Let's say if I want to add a header, I'll just put a test name and I create a template. And it will give me all sorts of ready-made templates. The Elementor Pro team works really hard, guys, like I told you. In every section, you will see so many templates that are available. And there are so many sections that you can add. We discussed that in some previous video as well, right? So all you have to do is click on any of the template that you want and just click on Insert. And this template will get inserted in your templates, right? It's, it's that simple. Let's go back. Okay, here we are. So whatever template that you insert will get inserted in your templates library. What I would highly recommend you guys is go through each of these uh, options, go to pop-ups, go to headers, go to footers, and see what sort of templates are available for you to be used. And you can just insert that in your templates library. Once the template is inserted in the templates library, you can easily use it while creating your own page. You can in fact, just click on edit on Elementor and you will be able to edit 100% of the templates, right? The way you want. The colors, the, the fonts, the animation, everything. Now, let's come to the second section where we will look at how to edit anything with Elementor Pro. Let's create a page. I'll just name it test and click on edit with Elementor. Okay, so I have this page. We discussed in the last video how to get rid of this title. All we'll do is we'll go to the page layout and choose Elementor full width. And now we have a clean slate to work on. So this is the plus sign to add a particular section, okay? And we need to choose what type of section we want, right? With how many columns. So these are two columns. These are three columns. These are four columns and so on, right? So let's choose a blank section for now. So if you see, the one that is highlighted in blue is a single section that is added. Let's say below that, you want to add a three column section. So one is a single column section. Just below that, we have a three column section now. If we want to adjust the column widths, we can just drag it here. It will also show you the percentage assigned to each column right? It is that simple. Next, this plus sign denotes what do we want to add. So what type of widget we want to add here. We will come to that just in a minute, but I'll show you how to navigate along. So if you see here, you'll have to just do a right click and go to navigator and you will be able to see the entire navigation. So in this section, we currently have just one column, which is this. In this section, we have three columns. In Navigator, you will be able to also move around your sections or any widgets that you want. So if you see what I did here is the three column section is moved to top and the single column section is moved to bottom, right? Let's go back. This is the Navigator, guys. It will be really helpful for you while navigating when you have lots of sections on your website. Okay, now let's see how do we edit a section. Now, this is edit section option where we get three options. One is the layout settings, then we have the style settings, and then we have the advanced settings. In layout settings, this will just stretch your section. You'll not be able to see it right now because nothing is added here, but this is to stretch your section from left to right, right? 
then what content width do you want? Do you want a boxed content or do you want full width content? Typically, we use boxed content because that is easy to work on. And you can also select what should be the width, right? In numerical value, you can also type in here. Okay, then let's look at column gaps. So column gap is nothing but what should be the gap between this column and this column, right? Let's come to this because this has multiple uh, columns here. There are three columns and let's just add something so that it is clearly visible. Let's add an image here. Again, let's add a image here and also let's add a image here just for reference purpose. And also let us add some image. When you click on the image icon, you come to your library. Let's add this guy in here. Then let's add some more people out here. And let's add, okay, let us remove image from here and let's add something else. Let's add a text editor, okay? And this is a default text that we have. Now, now it is easy to understand the column gaps, guys. Let's go back to the section, click on edit section. And if you see column gap, this is default. So this is the column uh, default column gap that we have. But if I make it extended, the column gap is extended, right? Now, if I go to narrow, the column gap becomes smaller. If I do wide, the column gap becomes wider, right? And so on and so forth. We can also define what sort of a height we want for each of these columns. So let's say we need a fit to screen. What fit to screen does is basically it fits your computer screen, right? So from top till here, it will fit your computer screen. Next is a min height, which is frequently used. So what is the minimum height that you want? And min height comes to as by, by default 400 pixels. You can have a vertical height option. You can have a vertical width option. So this is pixels, vertical height, vertical width. So right now let's go to pixels and choose, try to increase the height. Beyond 400, you will see that the column height is increasing, right? So let's fit it to, uh, let's say 450, okay? So this is the new column height that we have got. That's that. Next is column position. So where do you want to position these columns in this particular section? Do you want to stretch it? You want them to be on top. You want them to be in the middle. So basically what is happening is in this section, the columns are in the middle right now. Then in the bottom. So the columns will be at the bottom, right? Simple, then vertical aligning. How do you want it? Do you want it on top? Do you want it in the middle? Do you want it in the bottom? So this is the vertical alignment of each of these columns. To understand better, let's put this on top right now and show you the vertical align. If I choose space evenly, the columns will be spaced evenly, right? The height of each column will evenly match at the bottom, right? Now this is this is fixing the section settings. This is how we fix the section settings. In section settings, you further have the styles. What type of style do you want? Do you want any background overlay? Do you want a border? So let's, if, if I say uh, I need a solid border, we will get a solid border in the periphery of this section. We can also choose the width. So let's say I need a 100 pixel border. We'll get a solid border like this. Okay, so that's simple. Then what border radius do we want? We can set a border radius. So see what's happening. This basically gives a radius around the boundaries, right? And so on and so forth. If you need a shadow, we can click. If you see there is a small shadow here, we can change the color of the shadow. Nice. And we'll, we can also change the transparency of the shadow. Okay, and so on and so forth. right? So now we have a blue shadow, right? So these are a few bit of editing options that you have. You can also have the typography settings here. 
So what I would recommend is since I'll not be able to cover everything because there is so much to do and it is so easy to do, I would recommend you guys to spend time here and go through each of these. This will be helpful for you. Let's go to advanced settings. In advanced settings, we get to set the margin. We get to set the padding. Let's set a top margin of, let's say, 30. If you see, there is now a margin of 30 between the top section and the bottom section. If we also need, and we can do that for bottom as well. Then padding, padding basically gives you, uh, let's say I have, let's say I have a 30 uh, padding. So padding is for inside, margin is for outside, okay? Then we can go to motion effects. What do you want? Do you want uh, this section to be sticky? We generally use it for headers where we want the header to be sticky. So even if we scroll, we so if you see this particular header that I have, it is sticky. Let me show you once again here. If I go here, my header is sticky. Right. Then we go to, uh, we, we can also have entrance animation. For example, currently it is default, that is none. We want to fade in, right? So the section will fade in. We can also choose a duration of the fade. You want it to be slow. You want it to be normal. You can also have a delay. What sort of delay do you want in milliseconds? You can choose that as well, right? Uh, let's choose something else to see. Let's say zoom in as an option. So the section will zoom in and all that. So these three sections, guys, layout, style, and advance will be available for each and every element that you work on. For instance, this particular image will have three options, content, style, advance. This particular text box will have three options, content, style, advance. So like I said, everything is 100% editable. Okay, let's remove the uh, border and the radius that I put because it doesn't look good everywhere. I just wanted to show you that option that is available. Remove the box shadow as well. Cool. Also, if you see the column alignments are a bit off, that's because we had moved this column in between in this video. We'll just arrange it again. So if I consider from here till here as 100%, then three columns should be 33.33% each. So let's just maintain that. Okay, great. And this too. Okay, great. Easy way to do it is just click here and you can mention column with as 33.33, same as here, 33.33, and last as 33.33. Okay, great. Also, let's reduce the column gap here. We'll go to section edit, and we'll go to layout, and make the column gap narrow. That's all about this video, guys. I just wanted to show you the basic editing methods on Elementor Pro. The easier way that I showed you guys is to use a default templates from the templates library and much, much better way is to use ready-made templates from Inverter Elements, okay? There is one more exciting news for you guys. After the masterclass, which is the 10 part video sessions, I will be covering each and every widget one by one to a larger extent. So for people who want to become expert in Elementor Pro editing, that will help. That's all about it. Thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.